Okay, let's watch this. Can we react to... Can we actually react to... There is broad agreement right, among it. public health experts in the United States and Europe that you generally should not wash meat before you cook it. Let's find I mean, out. This is let's, hard. Le let's learn together, okay? Let's learn together. I want to find out the truth about washing meat. Hardly the most dangerous thing that you can do in your kitchen, but washing meat probably creates more health hazards than it prevents. It splashes raw meat juice around your kitchen where it yep, can yep. get on your raw food or on your hands. And it sends droplets or aerosols of raw meat goo up into the air where they can enter your body directly. Scientists have done observational studies where they asked people to do what they normally do in the kitchen. Some people wash the meat under the faucet, which is the really bad thing very splashy. Some people did it in a bowl. People cleaned and sterilized after they were done, but well, here's Shauna Henley at the University of Maryland's Department of Nutrition and Food Science. The current USDA study right now, they're showing that even if you say you clean your sink out, there's still potential for bacteria to hang out in the sink. So if you're washing something else in your sink, you don't know if cross-contamination's occurring because it could take as few as 10 bacteria cells to make someone sick based on their health status. See, Anyhow. I've heard I've heard in the past that you don't want to wash meat because of the splashing, but I I'm interested to find out the rest. Like the splashing alone uh is interesting. That's the only thing I've ever really known about about washing meat. I never I, I guess we're going to find out the rest, but this is very interesting germs or parasites on the surface of the meat that you could conceivably wash off are going to die as soon as you cook it. So don't bother washing it. That is the advice that public health people in the US and Europe have been promulgating in recent years as all this research has been emerging. But a lot of home cooks remain skeptical. This is a very culturally charged issue, and in this video we're going to consider the cultural dimension. Why some people feel particularly strongly about yeah, washing meat. Actually. In fact, these guys and I undertook an original research project on people's meat Ooh. washing attitudes Ooh. and practices, the results Curious. of which we we will present here. And I don't think any of us are proceeding from the assumption that meat washers are just rubes who need to be set straight. People have reasons for doing what they do, and it's not all about germs. The initial public health messaging on this topic was, I think it's fair to say, not very culturally aware. Lucia will never be able to wash off all the bacteria that may be present. And you could certainly say as much about some of my prior videos on this topic. Much of the United States Department of Agriculture's public outreach on meat washing came via a digital platform called Ask Karen. Karen was a fictional character created to personify the friendly consumer advice that the USDA provides. And when they rolled her out in 2011, Karen had not yet become what it is today. A pejorative to describe a clueless and entitled white lady. But it kind of fits, right? <laughs> they have since ditched the character. So, elephant in the room, white people. That's amazing. People are less likely to wash their meat than other kinds of people. That is a finding of some research, including our research, and also some done by Shauna Henley. And my dissertation at Drexel University was basically telling people, don't wash your chicken. This research involved doing focus groups with people around Philadelphia, where Drexel is. Quite a lot of people of color there, and Henley says the folks she spoke to were very receptive to the scientific message she presented. A couple years later, someone will see me and be like, I remember you, you're the chicken girl. I still wash my chicken, but I'm like, at least you know why. And they, they laugh and they know too. But we also found too that a lot of people, when they're washing or soaking raw poultry, it wasn't for bacterial purposes. It was more of getting rid of slime, getting rid of fat and other things that they perceived were on the chicken that they didn't want there when they cooked it. So what are all those specific concerns about? Well, let me show you what we found out. I enlisted the help of a couple professors at Middle Georgia State University. This is my buddy, Chris Savadawa, a public health guy. He's Hopi, Native American, grew up on reservation. What does he do with meat? I usually wash it uh, and, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's habitual. And this is Michael Gibbons, sociologist, white guy from the Midwest. He actually worked for a while in a poultry processing plant. I don't wash meat if it feels uh, or smells funky enough to need to wash, my wife will throw it away before I ever see it. She's very, very conservative. 
So what Michael and Chris told me is that good survey research usually starts with a qualitative phase, that is interviews, focus groups and such. As a practical matter, you usually can't do that kind of research on the scale that would yield scientifically, statistically valid results. You just can't interview enough people. The function of the qual phase of research is to explore the question a little bit and then get ready for the quant phase, that is where you craft an instrument, a survey that you can then put out to a whole lot of people and get statistically significant results. And basically my qualitative phase was TikTok. I have a strikingly global and diverse audience there and I got hundreds of comments from people absolutely disgusted by the idea that somebody wouldn't wash their meat. Again, it's very anecdotal, but I was struck by the number of comments I saw from people of, for example, Caribbean and Middle Eastern origin who said that they wash meat to get rid of a raw smell. There's even an Arabic word for that, zenha. Thanks to everybody on Twitter who tried to teach me how to pronounce that. I'm sure I'm still butchering it. Zenha. It's apparently infamously untranslatable, but a lot of people describe zenha as this kind of raw chickeny smell, even a putrid smell. And these commenters said that when they wash meat, they don't mean running it under the sink. They mean you put it in a bowl, you rub it down with citrus or vinegar or salt or even flour I've seen people use. Then you submerge the chicken and let it soak for a while in this solution that I would call a brine or a marinade, but this is what a lot of people in the world call washing. This, they say, gets rid of that raw smell and taste, and then you can cook it. Oh, hey, check out my new 10-inch stainless steel skillet, courtesy of the sponsor of this video, Misen, whom I'll now briefly thank. Pans in this very modest price range are never remotely this I can understand people calling that washing, but to me, that seems like a, like, yeah, it seems like a brine. That, that absolutely seems like a brine, you know? Too cool, dang it, yet. Stay activity, both of convert raw flavors into cooked flavors. Cooking is generally a really good way to do that. What does washing have to do with raw tastes? Well, here's a theory. I couldn't find any research on the historical origins of this particular washing practice, but here's my hypothesis. This seems to be particularly popular within cultures originating in particularly hot climates. Meat starts to go bad a lot faster in the heat, which means that in the days prior to refrigeration, people in much of the Middle East or Africa or the Caribbean would have been especially likely to be dealing with meat that has a gross smell. And mind you, that smell of spoilage is not necessarily the smell of foodborne illness. You can't smell salmonella, which is part of the reason why it's so dangerous. That yeah. off smell is from relatively harmless spoilage reactions, oxidation, rancidity, enzymatic breakdown, and the work of less dangerous classes of bacteria like pseudomonas, which create gross smells, and a ropey slime on the surface yeah. of meat as it sits around for a long time and develops it. Things like vinegar and citrus and salt can go a long way toward removing those gross smells, or at least covering them up. But mind you, they probably don't do very much to actually kill dangerous bacteria. Typically, the concentration isn't high enough. The amount of time that that concentration is exposed to your raw poultry really isn't going to do as much good as you're hoping it would. Now let's stipulate that people living in the modern Middle East have access to refrigerators and fresh chickens. So it's not that they're all dealing with rotten food all the time, but rather what I'm hypothesizing is that given the climate there, there's a more recent cultural memory that people have, a cross-generational cultural memory of dealing with- This is a really, really good video. This is a really, really good video off smelling or tasting meat. And that memory has resulted in this kind of heightened cultural sensitivity or awareness of even the slightest off smell from a chicken. Just a hypothesis. Though indeed, improving palatability is apparently a big motivation among meat washers responding to the survey that I put together with the Middle Georgia State guys. I invited you to fill this out in an earlier video, and boy, a lot of you did. 13,000 respondents was uh, very strong. A lot of the professional work I did, Sometimes you'd have three or five hundred respondents, and that would be a that would be a good result. <laughs> so it says something about your your reach, first of all. But of course, the problem with that is that it's not a random sample like you'd normally try to assemble for a scientific study. So, we approached it more. I don't think that was the one finger, but uh, but but it but it looks fine. 
or like market research. You are my customers. And it is therefore not surprising that you are disproportionately like me. White, male, American, and relatively young. Like attracts like. Hardly surprising. However, enough of you filled out this darn thing that what our sample size lacks in randomness, it kind of makes up for in volume. Enough people who are not very much like me at all also filled this thing out that we can learn some interesting stuff. People report not washing most meats, and when they do, it's fish and poultry. Um, interestingly enough, we did ask about um, other meats that were washed, and surprisingly, consistently, across geographical regions, uh, wild game, venison, things like kangaroo, squirrel, organs, uh, and other All right. okay. meats, guinea pig. That makes sense, right? People who are getting game are not dealing with meat that was factory processed and shrink wrapped and delivered to the supermarket hermetically sealed. They're dealing with like things that they may have even butchered themselves. Things with like feathers and hair and blood and actual dirt and debris on them that needs to be washed off. Indeed, many of you who responded to the survey said that's what you're trying to remove, not pathogens, but actual dirt, debris, and of course, blood. Cultural taboo against eating blood is pretty common. The Torah and the Quran, for example, both explicitly forbid eating blood. However, this is one case where I actually think a lot of people's concerns may be unfounded. I showed this clip on my TikTok and I got tons of comments saying, ew, look at all that blood, but it's not blood. In the meat industry, they call this purge. It's just water, juice from inside the muscle, and a lot of it leaks out into the package with time. The meat purges. The pink color in it is myoglobin, which is a protein that stores and transports oxygen inside your muscles. It's not the same thing as hemoglobin, which is what makes blood red. Similar things, but they're just fundamentally different. Meat juice is not blood. And if you've got a problem with eating myoglobin-filled purge, then you've got a problem with eating meat, because this is the liquid that's inside all meat. This is the juice that makes meat juicy, and it's the stuff that comes comes out during cooking and that you might later convert into a gravy. Anyway, down in the description there's links to all of our anonymized survey results. You can see the Google form responses and this PowerPoint the guys put together. Another interesting finding was an age corollary. So just based on proportionality for 25 year olds to 34 year olds, older people more likely to wash meat than younger people. We also interestingly found attitudes in general about food safety and hygiene got a lot more extreme when you looked at people coming from a certain type of household. In, in large, large families, in large families uh, the fact that there were desperate uh, people who were you know least important and then high. Our hypothesis is that if you're cooking for a really large family, you respond to that one of two ways. You either go super OCD, or you kind of go, screw it, I just got to get dinner on the table somehow, and nothing I've done has killed any of us yet. Again, all our data is in the description. Our hope is that it can be the jumping off point for one of you out there to do some actual scholarly research with a randomized sample. However, when I announced this project in an earlier video, I was contacted by some scientists in Europe who are working on a study about meat washing and other home cooking practices and attitudes right now. It is a huge EU project called Safe Consume, where they are studying cooking practices that lead to five major foodborne hazards in Europe. This is Monica Truninger, a sociologist at the University of Lisbon, who has been going in with teams of scientists to document how Europeans cook in their own homes. So it was in five countries, Portugal, UK, Romania, France, and Norway. And the Portuguese sample was 15 families. And we, we, we observed that 10 of our families, of our participants, used, they, they rinsed chicken. So that was something. And this was um, classified as the a red, red tag from a microbiological point of view. And remember, this is an ongoing research project, but looking at their preliminary findings, they have sort of a pretty glaring conclusion. Overwhelmingly, the chicken washers are in southern and eastern Europe. Romania, Hungary, Portugal, Italy. They're the ones washing their chicken. In contrast, almost nobody is washing chicken in Germany or the UK or Sweden. Why would there be such a strong difference along national lines? We suppose it's because of some proximity to so like a peasant society past. 
a peasant society past. That's another scientist who's working on this, also at the University of Lisbon, Luis Juncaira. In, in Southern Europe and Eastern Europe, in Eastern Europe, uh, most people's grandparents were, you know, lived in largely peasant society. So I think we, we think it's uh, something like that. So it's related to that, to that uh, proximity to that culture. A culture in which most people were slaughtering their own meat or buying it from somebody in a big open-air market and dealing with a product that might have actual debris and blood and feathers and stuff on it. Most people in Portugal are buying their meat from the grocery store these days just like I am, but that cross-generational cultural memory of getting a very different kind of meat, a very different kind of way, is just more recent and it informs current practices. It explains why a lot of if people in a place like that might be more likely to wash their chicken even when scientists tell them not to. Certainly poverty has got to be a related phenomenon, right? If you're poor here in the US, yeah, your chicken is factory produced and shrink wrapped. So the, the lesson is you don't really have to wash your chicken, uh, but if you're gonna if you are insistent on washing your chicken, you should definitely not wash it in the sink. That's what I'm getting. That's the takeaway that I'm getting from this video because the sink part, it just blasts poison. It just blasts toxic everywhere. Could you put up the link to this video? Abso-fucking-lutely. There you go. There's the link to the video for anybody who wants to go check it out themselves. It's actually super, super interesting. But it might also be the manager's special, cheap meat that's been sitting around for a while, and it has that ropey slime caused by spoilage bacteria. People understandably want to wash that off. For what it's worth, several experts I've talked to about this topic say that a safer option might be to take a paper towel and use that to blot or scrape off anything undesirable that's on your meat. That paper towel is easy to dispose of safely, and from a cook's perspective, dry meat browns better, so yay. But you know, do what is right for you and your context. Not everybody is living the same life. The one thing we should probably all stop doing is washing meat under the faucet. Most of you who wash meat said that you do it under running water, and that's probably the worst thing. If you're gonna wash, do it in the bowl. Zenha. All right. That was a sick video. That was actually a really fantastic video. What a good recommendation. What a fascinating video. Wow. I feel like I learned a lot. Thank you, Adam Ragusia. I think that's the first Adam Ragusia video that I've ever watched. That was uh, really, really good.